This is the Stock Trading Reality Podcast, episode 188. The basics. You know, get good at the basics. This is the Stock Trading Reality Podcast, where you get to see the realistic side of a trader's journey. Get inspired and stay motivated by everyday normal people who are currently on their journey to trading success. And this is your host. He is completely against full-time trading. Let him explain. Please do. Clay Trader. I get it. Maybe right off the cuff, they may. this may seem, wait, did, did the sound, did the voiceover guy say that right? Yeah, I am completely against full-time trading. And let me, like I said, I'm going to explain. What's my definition of full-time trading? My definition is, I, I just want that to be it. I want that to be my job. And in other words, I want that to be basically my only source of income. And from a, a wealth building perspective, I believe that diversification goes across all areas of life. Meaning sure, in the stock market, if you're investing, you don't put all your eggs in one basket. You're not gonna just be like, as great as Apple may be, yeah, they're a solid company, but to put everything in Apple, not smart. You wanna diversify. But I believe that's the same as in wealth building. So if your goal is I only want one stream of income and I want that to be full-time trading, I would say you might wanna step back and consider adding other streams of income. What that income is, you know, for me, it is real estate investing. It is uh, in, a, in cows. Yes, I invest in cows. Uh, it is very small. So don't farmers don't hit me up and be like, it's it's very small um, operation. He's got a thousand acre ranch. Don't believe <laughs> yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, and so there's many other areas of diversification that I believe you should have as a goal for yourself. So um, yeah, now now if you're defining full time trading as like being really good at it and being consistent and being able to generate consistent returns, okay, I would agree with that definition. But my definition is full time. If that's your only source of revenue streams, I would encourage you to maybe step back and focus more so on diversifying and getting multiple streams of income. Um, and Chez, I know you fully believe in that because uh, yes, you trade. Yes, you know how to trade, uh, but you also um, do side hustles. One side hustle is you hang out with me under um, you know uh, a, a job-like it, circumstances. It's a, rough, so, it's a rough life, let me tell you. Yeah, it's a rough life. But um, I mean, would you, I'm assuming you fully agree with this premise, right? Yeah, I absolutely do. And don't get me wrong, coming into the market, I had always intended that, oh, I'm going to replace, you know, this steady paycheck with trading in the market. And then as I realized, you know, the pressures, the voices, things like that, that led to a part time job and trading. And the more I look at it, you know, I don't think I know just about anybody who's what I would define as successful as having one stream of income. Every single person I know and I've met out here that I truly, you know, I love hearing people's stories and stuff like that. Uh, they all have multiple streams of income, whether it's rental properties, whether it's they're part owner of a business of some kind or something. There's, you can't, it's just like you said about putting all, you know, your entire retirement portfolio in Apple. It's just not smart. You need to be diversified. When one is struggling, the other one's going to generally pick up the slack or, you know, float you until it comes back up. So, yeah, it's all about diversification. And I absolutely love side hustles because I'm like, this is additional cash that I wouldn't have otherwise. So, yeah, yeah it, I, that's exactly what I believe in. Yep. That's uh, good stuff. And also, I promise we're not going to go off the off the off the path too far, which we do kind of in the the upcoming discussion. But even diversification, like from a diet perspective, if you're like all I'm eating is chicken breast and broccoli, it's like okay, that'll last for like a month. But you may want to diversify into some other foods than that. So diversification, I literally meant that. I think it applies across the board in all areas of life. Agreed. But there we go. We're oh man, I don't know what it is, but. Now, for listeners out there, if you're new, we've already recorded the interview, so that's why I say, I don't know what's up, but I just want to go like super off topic today for whatever reason. Now I want to have a discussion about the philosophy of diversification in all their areas of life, but I won't do that. We'll just get to the interview, and our interview is with Adam. He goes by Ewok Even Avenger in the chat room, and we have a discussion on that that may or may not derail the interview as a whole, but it doesn't last for too long. But he is a, a newer trader, as you'll see, but a newer trader that is going about things in maybe a way that you're saying, really? That's what it takes? That's what I gotta be doing? But yeah, this is the Stock Trading Reality Podcast. So if you want a very realistic situation of what a smart approach for a younger person to take, you know, as they're getting involved in the market looks like, then yeah, you don't have to look any further. Adam's gonna, you know, walk us through that. And there's a lot of great nuggets of wisdom, great nuggets of experience, even though he's still pretty new 
And a good reminder to everybody, myself, Chez included. So let's get to it with Adam, aka Ewok Avenger. Adam, welcome to the show. Hey, Clay and uh, Chez, thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Now, I, I think we're gonna get along real well because I noticed something via your alleys in the chat room, but as we were talking before we got <laughs> this whole thing started, you made another reference that may give a little more insight into your um, into kind of what you're into. So your uh -huh. alias in the chat room is Ewok Avenger. So my first question is, That's right. are you into Star Wars and are you into like comic book stuff? Uh, you nailed it actually, uh, both. So uh, Okay, yeah, then let me time. ask this. Let me see if I'm on a roll. Uh -huh. And then okay. you made the okay. reference, oh, I may need to phone home. So does that mean <laughs> you're also an E.T. fan, which is in the same genre of just kind of fantasy? Was that an E.T. reference? Uh, yeah, that was a, an E.T. reference, which does not happen often in my life, to be perfectly honest with you. That was probably the first E.T. reference I've ever made. <laughs> but it, but job, your, but your mindset is you like right. that genre. So I, I thought right. I'm like so, Ches. We're not even gonna talk about trading listeners. We're just gonna geek out here and have like a fantasy slash sci-fi slash. Oh man, comic you're, book. You're, you're speaking my language right now. There we go. I, so maybe yeah. you will get that five-parter episode you're looking for. <laughs> That's so true. That's a real one question, and then I promise we'll get to where the whole journey started for you. Right, but right. Um, I mean, what did you think about uh, Infinity Wars Part One? Oh man, it was uh, it was it was really good. It was kind of uh, um, it was really well done. It was executed. I mean, almost perfectly. Uh, Thanos as a villain. Of, I mean, can it get any better than that? I mean, wow. Yeah, I mean the the level of they they brought a lot of depth to the character. Yes, and yes. I think they really they they did it really well. It kind of took me back to when um the first Avengers movie uh, came out. It was like you know, many of us have been waiting a lifetime to see that movie. And when it finally was released, it was, uh, it was amazing. You know, it was incredible. Uh, so that kind of, uh, reignited my, uh, my passion for, uh, you know, comics and, uh, you know, the superhero hero world in general. Yeah, no. And it really was historic, even it not was, even from yeah. like a movie standpoint, but if you look at like strictly a business perspective, I mm -hmm. mean, for all yep. that, uh, you know, the, the shared universe and for, okay, just the logistics of lining up movies and having the movies need to flow together. It was actually, a, I would say a business modern Marvel where now you, you know, it's kind of commonplace, but yeah, back, I still remember uh, at Honeywell and I, I was, you know, geeking out and this, so this was, I don't know, 2007-ish, but I'm like, yeah, so I guess, you know, they're going to try to make like a, a Thor movie and a Captain America movie <laughs> right. and Iron Man, but then like all the movies like work together and like you can almost, exp you know, the phrase shared universe didn't even exist back right. then. But uh, right. so yeah, totally a, a business. Well, Chez, do you have any thoughts on this? Because I don't, I don't mean to cut you out of the, the geek mobile right now. Oh no, you're good. I haven't even seen that movie. So you guys are what? Wait, carry on. Wait, what? <laughs> you haven't seen uh -huh. infinity war. <laughs> I'm about to get kicked off this podcast <laughs> yeah. real quick. Oh man. Should I should I no, sign that, off the podcast I, I wanna, I wanna, and just start watching it now, or what do you want me I to mean, do here? You're just, I feel like this has been a fun fact, so I feel like I should know this about you. But oh my goodness! All right, we got to get uh, on topic though. Or I else haven't this been is, to a movie theater is, in almost this, three years now. We were joking around for listeners. We were joking before we got started, like, oh, maybe this will be because Adam said I I need to be done by six p.m., which is like five hours from now. So we were joking. Well, maybe this will be a five parter. <laughs> but as much as we were joking, it, Chez, I think you might have nailed it. We are treading very careful or very closely to maybe turning this into. A, just the first ever five-parter. I think the important question for Chez is, do you plan on seeing it? Yeah, definitely. It's just okay. that my whole thing is I generally won't go out of my way to see it. So if somebody has it and wants to watch it, I will watch it, but I'm not going to actively pursue okay. finding it somewhere. That, that's all I'll say. I got nothing against it. I just I don't go to the movies that often. That's all. I, 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 mean, no, I, no, I, I understand not going to the theaters. That's I know. I don't know, understand that. I don't understand that at all. Chet. I'm very <laughs> close. Theater I'm breaks. very close minded here. And um, I don't know. We got to move on. I'm, I'm distraught right now. I'm, I've been thrown <laughs> off my I don't think I don't think I've ever am on my A game. So I don't I've been thrown off my C game. So this may be really bad here. But all right. Adam, where did all this start for you? It being, uh, you know, the, the market, where did you first start to hear about the markets? And then, you know, what kind of transpired that caused you to get a little bit more interested to the point of, you know, getting more hands on with it? Um, well, I, I don't have actually a first 
memory of hearing about the markets. I think it's just something that it's kind of in all of our lives. So for me, it was just, it's always kind of been there in the background, right? But um, when did it actually get started for me personally? Like when did I actually start moving forward to engage uh, in the market? Uh, it started actually just over a year ago. Um, and that was uh, my wife and I were actually on vacation. We were sitting on these, you know, bags of money, drinking Mai Tais. And we're like, what do we do with all this money? And uh, which I'm joking, of course, it was it was mojitos. So, I was like, what, you got suitcases of money, <laughs> sipping some drinks on the beach, you know, and then, oh, what should we do with this? Well, Just, you know, we're th- like, he's uh, clever. We're going to have to be on our sarcasm game here. I like his sense of humor. I know, I, mean, he, he, I know. He, he does kind of the one-two combo, and then, he, you know, I, I'm liking this, but uh, okay. I'm no, going to have to uh, maybe we were, bump back up to C-minus game here. We're just, uh, we, do, we do it, you know, Scrooge McDuck style, right? We've got that big vault of coins and, uh, you know. Bitcoins, right? Yeah, cool. exactly. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Bitcoin uh, millionaire. Uh, no, but we were actually on vacation. It was kind of nice because it gives you the opportunity to um, kind of relax and step out of the routine and um, kind of forecast and talk about the future and hopes and dreams and uh, things like that. You know, and I think it's it's healthy and I'm uh, grateful that we're able to actually sit there and, um, you know, talk about what do we want life to look like. 20 years from now, five years from now, things like that, right? So um, we started talking about, you know, uh, a more immediate part of the future. So I'm currently, I'm a a student, right? And uh, I have about uh, two years left of uh, college. And um, we were talking about uh, what 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 is a good way for me to be spending my time right now and so i'm going to school for um business and i'm a finance major and the plan is to become a financial planner right and people need that up until this point um you know my my knowledge on the marketplace is very cursory same with investing so it was just uh you know, I expressed my interest in um, learning more about the market and uh, trading specifically. Also, as not not an uh, you know, in addition to investing, but also as kind of a income su- supplement. So sure. uh, we we spoke about it, and it was something that uh, she supported, and I I felt like I could do, and um, that's kind of where it all all got started. Uh, and then come January of uh, this year is when I was actually able, I started looking at the education aspect of, of trading. And that's when I think I first found you, Clay, and uh, CTU. Well, I was, I was wondering, considering you're, what you're going to school for right now, did you, I mean, obviously there's a lot of differences in terms of financial planning and strictly trading in the market. Uh, so did, was there anything that you were going to be, that you have taken personally from your classes currently that, you know, you were, you thought to maybe apply in an investing standpoint, or was this why there was kind of a void and you started looking online, Google, YouTube, whatever it was. Right. Absolutely. So, you know, when you're dealing with, uh, school, a lot of it, the first part of it, or at least the first half is all geared toward general education, right? So if you are a business major, I mean, you're not really even going to start stepping into that type of coursework until halfway through the process. So me wanting to try and be ahead of the the curve and also uh, knowing that my current work situation was going to come to an end, uh, I was like, well, you know, maybe, uh, you know, it's time to kind of uh, start a new chapter and, and pursue a different, you know, opportunity. So you had, it was kind of, um, two roads leading together, if you will. And it, even in school right now, um, I'm just now starting to get into, um, the investing aspect of it. Uh, so I feel like I'm, I may be a little bit ahead of, of the curve, which I'm grateful for. Cause I, I like feeling like I'm a little ahead versus a little behind. Right. 
Um, and uh, so, you know, you're right in the sense that, that, that there is a little bit of a void. So I started looking for uh, material on, on trading. And then obviously, as soon as you, you type in, you go to YouTube and you type in anything about trading, uh, you just, the gurus pop up. Do you remember and what you searched? I love this question. I mean, if you don't remember, that's totally cool. But I mean, the first Google search, the first YouTube search, um, I'm, we, we've heard all sorts of things, but do you remember what yours was or something very closely to it? You know what? Um, I have no idea. <laughs> I, and I, I, and I was trying to remember earlier, you know, in preparation, I was like, what, what was the first video I saw? I want to be the Wolf of Wall Street, I, you know, buy penny stocks. <laughs> yeah, I've heard, uh, you know. I, you know, I, I, I just can't, I can't seem to remember the first video, but I remember I, I have a really good online BS detector. It's a, it's a skill I've crafted over many years. And, uh, just the, the gurus, I remember seeing some of them and, and just know I'm being sold something. And, you know, I don't know if you, if you guys can relate to this, but you know, when you go somewhere, it's like, it's, it's the, it's the used car salesman pitch, right? It's kind of the best way to relate it to. And I don't think anyone really likes, uh, feeling like they're, they're being sold something that they either don't want or don't need or, or don't fully understand what they're getting into. So, well, cor correct me if I'm wrong, because I, I like to think I have a good BS detector as well. Mm -hmm. uh, the whole thing for me that's the red flag is when they focus on a lifestyle or result of something versus the right. product or whatever they're actually right. selling. And I'm like, whoa, 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 back up here a minute. But yep. yeah, there's a lot of uh, trading quote unquote gurus that mm -hmm. will talk all about their lifestyle. But uh, then when you start digging into the process, you're like, oh, so every every sheep is kind of funding whatever they're trying to show here. But right. I'm glad you have a good BS detector. It's required these days. No, and, and and that's it right there. I mean, even now, every ad on my YouTube feed is um, somebody stepping into a private jet or standing in front of a Lamborghini, you know? <laughs> and it's like, come on. You know, I don't know who actually uh, falls for that, but obviously it's enough people out there. Well, that was going to be uh, kind of my, my point is that's great that you and Chez have a BS, good, good BS detector. I'd like to think, I mean, I definitely do because I'm just so cynical now, but <laughs> like you just said, a lot of people don't because the revenue numbers that some of these people put up is, uh -huh. is probably pretty mind boggling. So, I mean, what exactly, I get it, the, the private jet, um, I mean, are you, do you look at, you know, back then when you were going through stuff, I mean, was there certain... Um, almost kind of, uh, what's the thing in poker? Uh, t tells, t tells, tells, right? If you're, yeah. if somebody has a tell. Was there certain tells that were being made um, that would set off the BS detector? I guess the, the point of this question is, a lot of people do struggle with it, but if we can help mm -hmm. somebody to maybe fine tune their BS detector, if you will, I mean, what sorts right. of things, like I said, what, what, would set it off? Um, I think uh, Chez actually identified it uh, really well. It's the focusing on the lifestyle because what they're doing is uh, they're selling a dream, right? But they're not necessarily explaining. Uh, it, it's the snake oil. It's the magic pill. You know, if they say, take this course and you can have this, like it's obviously not true, you know, so it's it's misleading. So, you know, for me, my if I ever feel like anyone is um, maybe exaggerating uh, too much or being, uh, uh or in almost intentionally misleading, um, in whatever they can offer you, then obviously that's not something that I would, I personally want to be involved in, you know, or, or that's not something that would get me to pay, uh, a huge amount of money to, to be involved in, you know? Yeah, no. And that makes sense to, I, I disagree is probably not the right word because I'm, I'm sure this is kind of what you meant, but I've learned that words matter, like every single word. So what they do is um, they, because to be fair, yes, buy my course and this lifestyle, you know, you can have this lifestyle. Okay, technically mm -hmm. speaking, yes, you, you can do that. But what they do is they focus on, you know, the outliers, right? They focus on the very, right. very rare situation where, you know, the, the, the current thing right now 
is the whole, you know, Bitcoin traders and Bitcoin millionaires. You know, people make a bunch of money on Bitcoin and all of a sudden they're selling courses mm -hmm. uh, because they made a bunch of money on Bitcoin. So yeah, buy my course right. and you can, you know, be like me and make a bunch of Bitcoin. Okay, okay, right. that's true, but you have to realize that you were in like one of, what will probably go down as one of the more famous bubbles in the history of bubbles, the cryptocurrency bubble. And that's great that you sold still for a profit, so sure things are possible, and that's what they're doing though. When they sell the dream, they sell the lifestyle, sure, when within the market, the sky is the limit. But uh, you know, to, to your point, it, it's, it's not nearly as clean, it's not nearly as efficient as what they portray. Is that essentially what you're, you were getting right. at there? Yeah, I mean, if, you, if they're focusing on the 5% of success or, you know, what is it? It's the 2%, that, um, that third standard deviation of, of that 2% outlier, right? And if that's the focus and it's being communicated like that's the normal, then that's obviously, that's not correct, right? Now, you're, it's correct to say like there's huge market potential and, you know, we live in a world where anyone is free to engage in the marketplace, which is amazing. So, you know, individuals do have the ability and the capacity to become successful or independently wealthy inside the marketplace. But to say that these extreme success rates, you know, are, are commonplace is, is uh, misleading because it's, it's, it's not common, right? I mean, you can, uh, and I, and I'm talking, I'm not, I'm not talking about like general, you know, not being able to, um, use it, you know, basically, uh, create an income off the market. That's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about the, uh, the, you know, the gold plated private jets and yeah, things like I, right, that. Right. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, think no, so. no, I don't, I think I'm probably going to plagiarize this from you because you so perfectly summarized what I try to say, but it takes me like a five page, you know, thesis. But what you said is when somebody is portraying the extreme, not normal as normal, there you go. That's selling the lifestyle. That's selling the dream. And that's beautifully put. I mean, Chaz, isn't, I mean, if you get the impression yep. that the not normal is being pitched to you as the normal and all you gotta do is work hard, uh, and by work hard I mean buy my course or sign up for my pick you know, news or my pick uh, service, then there you go. That that should be setting off your BS alarm. So great discussion and beautifully said, right. Adam. Is it okay if I maybe steal that explanation for future podcasts? Hey man, it's your podcast. You do what you want. Well, I, I mean, it was your. We own all the intellectual rights <laughs> on this true. clay. Come on now. Yeah, I, I hope you read the fine print. Uh, uh, yeah, I think right. paragraph C, line A, you know, part two. <laughs> yep. No, a absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I'm here. Um, you know, I think I said in my my email to um, IT Nate is for me. This is kind of um, a way to pay it forward uh, because I was. Listen, I started actually listening to your podcast to the podcast before I um, bought CTU, and obviously not to you know I've got to do the uh, the general disclaimer of obviously I'm I'm not paid to be here or say anything like that right. Well, but not yet. Well done. It was... Good job. You're following the script perfectly. <laughs> right. Keep it up, buddy. But it was um, it was basically why I was vetting you, right? I. I uh, started listening to the podcast and I heard somebody come on here and they just gave a real world example of what they're doing. And um, I mean, I wish I could remember the episode. Uh, and, and I was like, you know what, that's it. It, it sounded um, uh, realistic and I appreciated that. And then I, and then, you know, going into that and. Um, then, you know, watching your YouTube videos and how you talk about the education aspect of it and not necessarily the lifestyle aspect of it. For me, as somebody who's currently in the education system, right, I was like, okay, well, I know how to learn. I can learn things. And, and this guy is all about the education. So that that makes more sense to me. Gotcha. And that, that makes total sense. But um, so obviously you come across this podcast before you do anything at all, you know, here at claytrader.com. Um, nice plug, Your Chaz. BS detector nice is, not, is not, that's good. I didn't even drop the money with Clay one yet. <laughs> yeah, Don't worry, yeah, I'm getting yeah, there. All right, cool, cool. 
<laughs> but um, so you get, you know, the BS detector test is, you know, Clay passes it with flying colors. Good job, Clay. Keep wearing those t-shirts and shorts yeah. in your videos. <laughs> um, and then did you dive straight into to university or did you one course at a time or, you know, what, what did this look like afterwards? Because obviously it sounds like you found what you were trying to look for generally. Um, right. Yeah, where to go from there? Yeah, so I'm I'm the kind of guy who if you know I usually the package deal is the best, right? So I went straight for CTU. Um, I was looking at the individual courses, but not knowing, um, being so new, uh, you know, it's it's like, well, how do you know where to get started? So buying one individual course, you know, how do I know I'm starting in the right place, right? So for me, it was, um, you know, let's do all of CTU. That way I have all the content available for me. And I know that it's, and it's kind of, it's already outlined in a, in a logical way uh, and, and logical progression. So for me, it just, it, it made the most sense. Um, Not to mention, I, just to make sure people are aware, it also made the most financial sense because if you, and maybe you did right, this, but if yeah. you pull out your calculator and start to add up the cost of each and every course, and then you factor in that you still don't get access to the live webinars and you still don't get access to uh, you know, the case study library, then not only are you paying more, but you're not even still getting access to everything. So um, you know, I don't know if right. you, that played into it, but just as an FYI, um, by all means, don't trust me and just start buying courses one at a time and then come buy CTU because we make more <laughs> revenue that way. So by all means, do that. If I, I almost kind of right. like when people don't trust me because it's ultimately more revenue. But you know, if you want no. the best, like you said, package deal, then you know the right. numbers truly do work out. Did you pull out the calculator? Uh, yeah, I did a little bit of the math. I think you break some of it down for you right on the website too. Like you show the... You know, I mean, I, it's been a while since I've actually looked at the pricing, but no, uh, you're right. Yeah, but yeah, are... I mean, yeah. So I mean, it, it was pretty easy to figure out. It was just a better deal. But you know what I really liked the most was um, the content is like I have lifelong access to it, access to new material you put out for CTU. Uh, right? why, out of curiosity, why do you say that? Why do you say you like that you have lifetime access to it? Um, well, because one of the other big courses uh, that's very popular, uh, it was, I, th I think, what is it? You have like six months to, to wrap it up or to finish it or, or what have you. I, I don't like know. I just, it's here. three months. It's three months. It's three worse. months. Oh, I, I, man. I don't know if you're trying to set me up and, and push my buttons because you know it sets me off, but it is mind boggling to me. It is, yeah. infu it is infuriating that that even it has is. to be something for Adam to say, hey, you know, hey, I like that you offer lifetime access. Why is lifetime access not just the standard? Like, are, right. are, it's unbelievable that there's people out there that say, hey, I want to help you. I want to help you accomplish your lifestyle. I want to help you blah, blah, blah. But you only get access to the material for you know right. X amount of time. I mean, if that's not a BS detector flag, I don't know what is. But it's just, that's why I don't get upset. If you don't trust Ches and I, I get it. There's so much shady stuff going out there. And I think the epitome of shady is, hey, I want to help you. But you're only getting access for a certain amount of time. And then I'll help yeah. you again, but you need to pay me again. I mean, how is that not? Right. Anyways, I blame you for yeah, sending no, me off I on mean, that tangent. Uh, I mean, you, you pressed it, but it's so pathetic. Right. I mean, uh, you know, call me greedy, but if I pay for something, I want access to it when I want access to it. Well, it's you like know? buying a book from Amazon and Amazon saying, hey, right. you have that book. And it's not one of the rental programs. It's, hey, you have this book, um, but then you're going to need to send it back to us, okay? Because I know mm -hmm. you bought it, but you know it's 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 really bad. But um, And maybe you answer this in kind of a roundabout way, but going into CTU, what was your goal? Uh, because you're obviously you're a business finance major. Were you looking mm -hmm. strictly for investing were you looking well you know I, I have I'm a I have I'm a student so you're looking at your time schedule so maybe I want to be more so a swing trader or are you thinking right I want to be a day trader what was and I'm not saying that's actually what turned out but you know because it's amazing how when people go into something they have one you know kind of notion of what they want but then it, it, it can really get turned on its side but what was your kind of ideal goals and mindset going in and as far as what you wanted to do with the markets right so um, the initial goal was and is um, uh, an income supplement or income replacement. And uh, 
what it was I, initially i was like oh well maybe you know let's check out what day trading is and then i started looking at day trading i was like i don't like this at all <laughs> why right that's cure i'm um I'm, we're all different i'm not for, saying you're wrong but that just really goes because i love day trading obviously so for you to say that right. so this is a good no and and i'm exaggerating a little bit it's not that i don't uh like it it's actually that it's not necessarily uh, it doesn't work for me in my schedule because, for example, um, right now my courses are all during market hours, right? So if I'm solely day trading, then I'm I'm losing out on two or three days out of the week. So that limits me to basically, you know, maybe I've got two days where I can actually, uh, you know, sit and day trade. Right. Uh, so then... I, so I started, you know, the more you learn about it, the more you start to form, you know, like ideas of, of how this is going to look practically in your life, you know, got to think like, how does it, how does this look practically? Like, what's the realistic version of this and how does it fit into, to what I'm doing or how can I, you know, fit what I do around it or, or what have you. So, uh, I've been getting more into, you know, I've tried, I tried to, uh, you know, through paper trading, doing some, some day trading and, you know, with moderate success. And, uh, I started to get turned on to, um, options, right. And, uh, and the idea of swing trading and I, and I just, for me personally, it just, uh, seems to, uh, be something that is more of my personal style. Uh, that's the beauty of trading is that uh, it is pretty much as personal as it gets. And that's why right. we always say, is, you know, cookie cutter strategies, while they may work, they're not going to jive with your risk tolerances right. or even just your time frame. So, yeah. Right. I mean, hey, more power to uh, any, any of the day traders out there that, that are able to get in and, you know, get some profit and get out. You know, that's that's awesome. You know, good for them, right? Um, but it comes down to personal style and, and, and personal preference. And if, it, if something is just not working for you or it doesn't feel right, you've got to be able to adapt to, to that and be able to understand that and be honest with yourself. You know, if you're, if you're trying day trading and you are tanking and not refining your skills and each, each trade is not getting better than the last, then, then maybe it's time to, you know, step back a little bit and look at the bigger picture and be like, well, maybe is there another version of this or is there another way that I could maybe approach trading that's different than what I'm currently doing that might have a better you know, rate of success, right? Yeah, definitely. So, so what did, so I'm assuming you, you got university, what'd you say, almost a year ago or you got into trading period about a year ago? No, no, uh, th this year, uh, January, I think was, uh, when I first started. So January of this year, uh, I started looking into the trading courses and actually before I got into CTU, because I was like, well, if I'm going to spend this money, you know, and this is coming from a place of, of no knowledge and no experience, right? Maybe then, uh, other than like a handful of YouTube videos. Right. And so I was like, well, let's, is there another way to kind of do a soft introduction without, um, the financial commitment? Right. So I actually went to one of those, um, a website that does, uh, you know, they sell, it's like an online educational website kind of situation where they have a ton of different courses with all different topics, not just like trading or for like nine bucks or anything each. like that. Yeah, exactly. Yep, okay. Exactly. So I went that route and it was intentional. Uh, and it was like, I want to take this to see if this is something I want to, uh, a path I want to continue down. So I finished that up and the end goal, I knew that in starting that course, I knew that if I liked that, then I was going to um, get into CTU. So I think at that point, I had already identified CTU as um, my, you know, preferred educational platform, if you will. Uh, but I wanted to be able to uh, get um, 
a little bit of an introduction to something else. And it was it was OK. You know, I mean, it was it was pretty basic and pretty uh, topical, but it um, allowed me to to identify it like, yes, this is a uh, path I continue to go down to. This is something I feel like I can do and be successful at. And then, um, you know, after I finished that, I think is when I when I got CTU or. Okay. Yeah. yeah, no, that, that makes sense. It's. um. It was a very dipping your toe in the water uh, at, a, at a very probably cost efficient type pathway because I know what site you're talking right. about. And, uh, you know, I think it's a get what you pay for type deal where you, you don't pay much, right. but you don't get much. But in your situation, you know, the way you explained it, you know, that does make sense, uh, you know, given the path and, you know, given what you were trying to accomplish. So we'll skip mm -hmm. back to you get CTU um, and you hop right in. And you mentioned, you know, wanting to go to options. What ultimately mm -hmm. led you to options? Was that a function of your, of your personal schedule or did some other attribute, you know, characteristic of them kind of catch your eye that brought you more into, you know, wanting to, to learn about those? Um, actually, it was a, uh, I think it was a buddy of mine because I looked at options, you know, when you first start looking at trading and you start to explore it like options are actually really intimidating because there's so if it, it feels like there's so many variables you know and you've all of a sudden you got these greeks coming into play and so and you're like what the heck is all this you know what i mean so when you're coming from uh uh basically a knowledge base of of nothing of zero and you're still and you're just trying to educate yourself and then in your course, you can see that there's options courses. I, I I knew eventually I would get there. Like I would look at those, right? And I think shortly after I actually started the course, I um, got on the phone with a buddy just to catch up with them, right? And I asked him, I was like, so what are you doing now? Like, what do you do? And he's like, oh, uh, I'm, I'm trading. And I was like, no way. So it was like this moment of excitement where we were both independently doing these things and he's been doing it for like the last two years right and uh so him and i uh you know hooked up and then and we started talking about it and then he he spoke about how he basically just he only trades um options so that kind of started kind of moving me a little bit more down that path uh, of, quick question of option trading mm -hmm. you said he was trading um, and you can use hindsight now, but because at the time, obviously, well, yeah, somebody's because what I'm trying to get across is Ches and I, we have people all the time tell us, you know, in customer service, yeah, I'm trading the markets or I'm a trader. And it's like, no, actually, you're gambling in the markets and you're a gambler. Mm -hmm. So was he right. trading or is he, you know, doing stuff with options where he's, you know, going long in earnings and, and stuff like that? Or, you know, was he actually approaching things in a, 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 a business fashion rather than just a straight up gambling fashion. Right. He, um, I think it, I would have to say more of a business fashion okay, because, good. um, it's, it's like, it's his, he's been doing it, I think successfully for the last two or so years and it's his, it's his income and he's able to live off of it. Okay. Nice. Nice. And is he, yeah. he's your age or ballpark your age? Yeah. Ballpark. Yeah. And what is his, his trading strategy as far as the options are concerned? Um, you know, I think uh, he does a little bit more uh, fundamental more than technical. And uh, he will, I, I believe he'll sit in positions for a lot longer than um, like what I normally used to. I, I look at, at stuff and I'm like, uh, initially when I started looking at options, it was like, a, I was looking to be in a position for like a week or two weeks. And I know that he'll hold on to stuff for, for a lot longer than that. But for his, actually how long he stays, um, in, in a position, I'm, I'm not hundred percent sure. Okay. All right. Now have but you, it is, it is, it is longer term. Yes. So my question, um, is if he's doing this for full-time income, have you tried to have him walk you through exact? Because it sounds like you're you kind of know what he's doing, but you kind of don't. You think he's using more fundamentals, but it sounds like you're a little right. you're shaky. Uh, why have you not been like, hey man, if this is working for you to the point of it's full time income, um, you know, have you ever thought to just ask him to walk you through exactly what he's doing? I'm not saying it would work for you, but have you ever considered mm -hmm. that at least? Yeah, absolutely. So. 
initially what happened is because his um, knowledge base is, was a lot deeper than mine. So what happened when, you know, he found out, you know, when we both found out kind of that we're into the, we're, we're both into, into trading, uh, my, we, we've, we actually, we first got together and my, uh, level of knowledge was, was so low. It was kind of hard to have a conversation, right? Sure. So it was, it, you know, it was like he, he knew what was going on and he was generous and like explained certain things to me. Um, uh, and I'm sitting there kind of, you know, wide eyed trying to just understand what he's saying. Right. So we actually, we didn't get together for a while. Um, and then I finally got to a point where it's like, okay, I could actually have a conversation about options. And it was through, you know, I went through, um, the courses on, uh, CTU. Right. And I was like, okay, I have a confidence level where I know I can talk about options trading and, and reasonably understand what's going on. (laughs) <laughs> and understand gotcha. and or contribute to the conversation in a certain way. So uh, we uh, got together again and uh, he showed me more of his actual uh, style of trading. So I was able to actually sit there and he and he did talk to me about his process um, on what he normally does. Uh, and was that something that you were going to emulate yourself? Yeah, so I'm still like developing and refining my my technique and my style and um i was able to kind of garner a few things and i'm trying to apply them right now so it's kind of a test phase so for me i i think you know it's the the kiss method right the keep it simple so my goal is to keep my trading style as simple and fundamental as possible and it you know focus on the basics focus on the fundamentals and it's kind of like any you know any professional athlete right the best athletes are the ones who are rock solid at the fundamentals and you know my goal is to be really good at that because if you you could look at you know all these advanced spreads and things like that for options but if you don't know how to find a good a good chart or know how to find a good option i mean then that's kind of all for naught right right so uh you know ultimately my goal is is to be able to you know develop a really strong um uh, and when I say fundamentals, I'm not talking about, you know, fundamental analysis necessarily. I'm, yeah, I was going to say, I'm know, just going like, to clarify that for the listeners yeah. that he wasn't digging into um, 10K or whatever the filing yeah, stuff right. is. Yeah, right. No, not, like not, not at all. Uh, I, I just mean the basics, you know, get good at the basics, right? So that's, for me, that's, uh, that's my personal style. And then when, if, if, you know, once I start feeling more confident in certain, uh, you know, at, at at being able to identify certain things and being able to read something a certain way and, and I feel good about it and it's and I'm testing it and it's working out, then I can kind of add to that, right? Add to the mix and 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 kind of uh expand on on maybe my process or what I'm I'm using, what I'm looking at, or uh strategies, you know, expand and develop right. the strategy. Now, based- now for listeners out there, sorry to cut you off. No, uh, no. have you have you put money into an account and options trades on and anything like that yet? Or are you still kind of working on your strategy and focusing on the pretty much the process and how you want to approach this? Right. So, uh, both, uh, <laughs> so I, uh, I've recently funded an account and have just, what account? Uh, That's always a popular question. And- what brokers are people using? Oh, I'm on, uh, I'm on thinkers. Okay. Okay. And I think the, like for me, there's just a lot of material that supports think or swim. Uh, so it's really easy to find basically help. And then, uh, y- you know, the, it was, it was kind of like, since it's a really popular platform for me, it was like, okay, well, I'll just, I'll try it out. And since I basically got started on it, it's, it's, it's something I'm comfortable with at this point. So I'll, I'll, I'll stay on it. I'm not saying I will probably explore different platforms down the road, but right now where I'm at in terms of my education and refining my process, it's, 
um, I think switching platforms would um, kind of, uh, you know, maybe slow me down or kind of hinder me a little bit just because I'm already familiar with it. And I don't want to, I don't want to necessarily change that right now. Uh, but I like the, uh, I mean, the customer service, uh, you know, was really good. Anytime I've had questions, I've been able to find answers either by contacting them directly or going online and looking up a tutorial, you know what I mean? So it's, it's been, you know, the popularity of it and this, and the robust resources for it is, is kind of what initially like drew me to it. But, uh, yeah, so I've been paper trading, um, for i think i started after uh, i finished the robotic trading course and uh real cash uh was actually earlier this week was the first time i made a uh real cash trade really well this is good now you didn't put on that trade just because you knew this podcast was coming up did you no okay, not at good, all good. i actually had a uh I, you know, you know, I really wanted to just get into like a trade and, and just have an awesome success story for you guys. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he went all in and uh, now he's looking for that yeah. paycheck for this podcast, Clay. Yeah, so right. be, it's in mine shares yeah. though and it's in the mail. Is that yes, how it it'll be go to him tomorrow? <laughs> no, uh, no, it was, it was just a goal that um, I had set. So it was, uh, it was, it was time to, um, I wanted to start trading with uh, real money by the time uh, my uh semester had started so my question uh, here because this yeah. is always a yeah. a, a sticky situation because timelines can be arbitrary in some senses where okay right. so do you th were you truly ready do you believe or do you think maybe you probably should have held off because you know you just did it for the sake of an arbitrary timeline i'm not saying that's the case but i mean how did you i mean I, let's do it this way tell us about the trade and then how did you feel about it because this pertains to a lot of people that listen is, uh, you know, that first trade, should you actually have done a real trade? Were you ready? So I think this could open up some interesting uh, rabbit holes here. Cause right now I feel like, uh, maybe the arbitrary timeline got you, but I, I don't know, maybe it, it worked out perfectly fine. Well, I mean, to address the, the arbitrary timeline and then go into the actual trade itself. Um, the, the thing about learning and educating yourself is, you know, doing the paper trades is good and it's very helpful. Um, but what I don't want, I, what I wanted to avoid was getting stuck in the, I just need to learn more before I can move forward. You know what I mean? Like there's uh, the, uh, the term paralysis forever, by analysis, for, right? Yeah, forever education, you're just in this loop and you never kind yeah. of put rubber to the road. Yeah, I hear Right. You. So it was important for me to, I felt, I felt comfortable and I'm confident enough to actually go and try to make a real trade like i feel i have enough to be able to identify what may or may not be a, a good trade and uh you know i'm saying that of course before i tell you about my actual trade so <laughs> so uh so no i felt like it was good and i think it's um you know i have my risk tolerance pretty much identified so knowing that it's almost kind of nice to be able to um, jump in the market and maybe get a little bit of a bloody nose first off so you don't get any delusions, you know? So, I mean, if your first time you ever put money in the market is a big win, then it, it might kind of skew you, skew you in, in, in a certain way. Fool's gold, right. the classic fool's yeah, gold, exactly. Right. So, uh, so, no, uh, so I, I felt uh, the timeline, all, timeline was maybe a little arbitrary, but also the fact of of actually you know putting rubber to the road uh, and not getting stuck in the the education cycle without application you know because education without application is is worthless right I fully agree and what and, I what I find fascinating though is you can tell there's a a big thought process that went into this there is a, a good solid framework and a foundation for am I ready. Yeah, I think so because of, and then you were able to list valid reasons. And you know what, maybe right. ultimately you weren't quite ready, but because of that framework and foundation, you know, you were able to, all right, maybe I need to focus on this, that, and the other. And and my point is, you know, education is not a magic bullet by any stretch of the imagination. And that's coming from a company that sells educational courses. But my point is mm -hmm. education gives you a framework to be able to approach situations like this in a much more methodical manner where 
even if you don't quite have success, it's not like it's the end of the world. You have the tools in place to be able to, you know, kind of diagnose what maybe went wrong, or in some cases, nothing went wrong other than the trade just didn't quite work out, and that's always a possibility too. So, I mean, do you think that's kind of right. a fair summary of how you approach this with a good, solid framework, you know, in place? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I think that's a, a pretty fair assessment. Okay, okay. Definitely. And, I mean, have you, and this you said that was like a week ago, right? Uh, that was this week. This week, and what is today? Yeah, Today's that was, Thursday. That, that was, that so, was, like, are we talking Monday? That was, um... Yes. No, Monday was a uh, oh, holiday. That was holiday, Labor Day, actually. Yep, right. So market, yeah, market was closed. So that was on Tuesday. Okay. So is it safe to assume that you have not done any other real money trade since then? Uh, right. I was actually looking at the market this morning before, uh, you know, before we we started, uh, you know, recording. But the uh, essentially, I just saw a bloodbath, and I didn't see much of an opportunity. So. <laughs> So I don't know if you guys were, were looking at, I don't know what you guys were looking at today, but for me um, and in the way that I, I was scanning, I didn't see anything that was uh, something to jump into. Perfect. So, okay, you didn't see any opportunities. So define opportunities because obviously an opportunity is going to be a function of your strategy. And as we've alluded to, you know, there's no cookie, uh, cookie cutter strategy for everybody. So this will be a good question of kind of how you're trading and what you're looking for. So what would classify in your case as an opportunity? So um, I think an opportunity for me, I mean, just to say quite simply is uh, a position that I, I know or a position that will ultimately be profitable. And the way that I look at that is, you know, I have my basic indicator. I actually have a checklist that I go down to that go through, but the initial response is, is I start looking at the charts, you know, I'll pull up a symbol and I look at the chart and if the chart looks like it has opportunity as in it's going the direction I want, right? Because one of the first things you've got to be able to do is, you know, what direction is the price going, right? <laughs> so, at least in, the, in, in historical terms, yeah, definitely. Right, yeah. So, you know, I'm, I'm looking at it and I, you know, if the chart looks, let's say healthy, right? And that's either a solid uptrend or a solid downtrend, uh, then I'll explore it beyond that. Uh, but today, just uh, because the way that the markets were going, I was like, okay, well, everything is either, uh, it's at a like an all-time high, which for me personally, I'm, I'm not somebody who's attracted to all-time highs because I know that if I buy at the all-time high, then I, I'm, I'm likely, I feel like I'm likely to get burned off that. Um, you know, have if you, I'm have you gone, have you gone through that yet? No, you've only put one trade on, right? Oh man, it's almost a rite of passage. I'm just kidding. You don't have to buy the high too. I'll make a point, I promise. So, uh, you know, waiting for a, just a logical entry, I, I guess, would be something that um, you know, like an appropriate uh, dip, but not a trend reversal, right? Sure. So, so and, and you don't have to go through the whole thing, but just to clarify for listeners, you literally almost have a checklist of things before you decide to put that trade on. It's got to meet certain criteria, right? Right. Yeah. I have a, I have a literal checklist. Right. No, and I've, I've, I've got my, you know, I've, I'm, I'm an Excel fan, so I've got my, uh, gotcha. <laughs> I've got no, my calculators. And it's, and and it's not that you're doing it for the sake of doing it. It's just that's you're putting down it's it's like a logical step process. It it has to meet these certain criteria and it keeps uh you know, it keeps you from being arbitrary and just, you know, oh, I feel like buying here. You know, that's not a good buy signal. And I want to pick up just right. add in here. You like I said earlier, words matter and you throw in, you know, I want to make sure that uh, you know, an entry point or what what have you is logical. Well, what does logical mean? Because again, Chez and I, we've heard many people say many things are logical, which are not logical. And you'll the, just have to take- The tea leaves right. point to an up action yeah. in price. So it sounds like the purpose of this checklist is to define and tell you what your definition of logical is. Is that essentially the purpose of that checklist? Right, that's that's right. So if I mean, if I'm looking to um, you know, buy a call option, I'm obviously going to look for uh, something that is headed in the right direction for a call option, right? 
and then within that I'll look for something that has uh, a good entry so not an all-time high or not a possible reversal like let's say you've got a long-term uh, uptrend but it's been going sideways for a little bit you know you've got to be cautious or aware that you know or at least try to be able to identify if it's getting ready to continue the uptrend or turn around and go down on you you know so it's it's you know, it kind of it's it's all based on the scenario, right? right? But it, I mean, you've, you know, just being aware that these that that may happen. So it's like maybe today's not the good point, a good point to enter. But I'm gonna check back on this, and and you know, in a day or two, and see what's see what the current activity is 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 doing. And I think you summarized it perfectly. I asked you so the checklist, and you know, a checklist. That's he's talking Excel spreadsheets. The purpose is to define a single word. And Adam says yes, exactly. If you're thinking. Wait a second, you're telling me that this guy has an entire checklist to define one single word? Yes, that's what I'm telling you. And yes, that is what actual trading looks like. That's what building an actual strategy looks like. And if you think that somebody is just gonna spoon feed you all of that, that's just not how it works. Trading takes time, trading takes effort, trading takes building. So if you're thinking, well, that sounds like a lot right. of work to have an entire checklist to define one single word, yeah, it is a lot of work. That's why a lot of people burn out because you know it's not as um, straightforward. It is not as glamorous as many people you know portray it to be. And just to really also kind of drive home this final point um, is Adam. I, I I love the mixture we have here. So Adam is clearly literally just getting started with real money, but he just got started in January. Literally, of I want to get interested in the market, and here it is, basically nine months later as of the recording. And he's still, as you can see, in very early stages of building a strategy. So yeah, don't go into this thinking, yeah, I'll have it figured out in like a, a few weeks, maybe a month tops. You know what, let's take a worst case scenario. Right. Let's say two months tops. No, here's Adam, nine months in, and he's building. He's He did go live, which is, which is solid. But think about that, nine months. And, and Chez, I think he's the epitome of when you do things right, when you go about things in a, in a proper way, it's going to take time. Would you agree, Chez? I mean, nine months in? Yeah, it's it's, it's going to take time, but it's also going to give him the highest possible chance of success. So, yep, it's just a, that's a, an investment you have to make. It's pretty much in the time, especially. But, uh, you know, Adam, obviously, there's a lot of great stuff you're doing. Um, if you want to touch on your strengths, I'd love to hear what you think you're doing really strongly right now. Ooh, that's a rough one, man. Uh, <laughs> Come on, talk yourself up. The, the the strengths um you know i guess if i if i had to identify um what i'm happy with or my particular strengths then that is actually um i think the willingness to um adapt and then also and what so what i mean by that is the willingness to um, adapt and change, like identifying and being honest with myself about what is and isn't working, right? And uh, for example, going back to uh, looking at day trading and understanding and being able to say honestly to myself, go, okay, well, this is not something that I feel like I would excel at in terms of intraday, but the swing trading is still a practical option and then shifting over and adapting to okay well what does swing trading look like how does how how can i apply what i've already learned in day trading to swing trading right um so i think that would probably be um maybe one of my more significant strengths um and i think also the um that I, I think I would have to contribute maybe um, being grounded in uh, in reality also. Like I know obviously that's not like maybe what you're looking for in terms of like what's your actual, like are you really good at reading EMAs, <laughs> you know? <laughs> but no, that uh, would be, I think just trying if, to be. If you're saying your strength is keeping expectations in line with reality, that is, I, I right. would say the most important thing. In fact, to plug a video, there is a video that I, I have out there that's called How to Get Started in Trading. 
And literally that video is about what Adam just said. Before anything else, get expectations in line with reality. That is how you properly get started. So if that is one of your strengths, I would fully argue that that is the most important strength to have. That video gets a lot of hate because it's like, well, I thought you were gonna tell me how to do this. I don't care what you thought. I'm telling you what you need to actually do to get started trading. And getting started trading has nothing to do with platforms. It has nothing to do with um, you know, what you're gonna trade, when you're gonna trade, not how much right. It has everything to right. do with your mindset going in. And like you said, you gotta have, you gotta be grounded in reality. So sorry to cut you off there, but I wanted to no, reinforce no, I, the fact you are definitely, that is a strength that you uh, need to have and want to have. What about weaknesses though? I mean, are, what are some things that you recognize you probably still want to kind of fine tune and work on as you go forward? Um, for weaknesses, I, I think that gets more into, um, pro I think just the, the technical aspect and that's when I, I go back into technical analysis. Um, I think really w what it comes down to is um there's already i i feel like there's already so much more to learn and i can always do better than what i'm currently doing in terms of performance so it's kind of like okay well i could have read this chart better or i could have uh reviewed um this a little bit more extensively or i could have set some better a better stop loss, for example, you know what I mean? Um, so I think it comes down to uh, just a general weakness that's more associated with uh, still developing and refining a certain skill set. That makes sense. Gotcha. And I just, I want to make sure that uh, I'm going to give you a small bit of warning. Uh, I'm sure you already realize this though, but as long as you understand that not every trade is going to be a winner, and that doesn't mean that every time you have a loser, you need to tinker super hard with your strategy. As long as you don't right. have that mental right. approach, and you're just talking about overall basics of, huh, I should have, I, ooh, I really miss this, you know, level of support, or I miss this level of resistance, whatever it is. Um, as right. long as, as long as you understand that you're never going to get yourself to 100% hit rate unless you just buy and hold forever and hope it doesn't go to zero, which <laughs> I hope nobody does that, but I know people do. Um, you're going to be just fine. But Adam, it's been an absolute yeah, no. pleasure talking to you today. Um, I would like to lend you my time machine and I would like you to go back to any period of your life you want and give yourself one piece of advice, not a buy or a sell recommendation. All right. Well, um, it actually goes on what you just said. And I would say don't be afraid to fail. Um, and that's because you know, what you just touched on is you are not going to win 100% of the time. And that's not what I was implying with the last uh, statement, but be okay with, with failing. And this is actually more of, of, of a life philosophy as well as a trading philosophy. As long as you're learning from it, there's benefit or there's gain, right? So the only true failure is not being able to learn from the mistake or from you know a trade that goes uh, sideways on you you know so if you can accept that and be okay with you know getting a little red in your ledger then then you'll be all right so i i think that's what i would i would tell myself very very nice and that makes a whole lot of uh sense and like you said that's that's, that's just a good life philosophy in general now we have the fun questions, and I promise, listeners, we will not go off the, the rails here because I know we already talked about some movies. Uh, but I am curious, given that it seems like we kind of enjoy the same genres, how are you going to answer this first one? What is your favorite movie? Uh huh. Favorite movie? Um, well, I'm going to cheat a little bit, and I'm going to go with favorite trilogy, and that's the original Star Wars trilogy. Thoughts, Clay? Can't go wrong there. I mean, that's just pure America. I mean, you can't go wrong with that one. Well, I was just going to say, if, if anyone <laughs> has anything they want to say against that, I got some harsh words for them. No, yes, that's an amazing trilogy for sure. I mean, it's, it's you know, the, the, the Star Wars trilogy has done so much. It's been so, you know, prevalent in our lives and culture. So, you know, you have to go in terms of enjoyment and impact. Clearly, it's the best. I'm, I'm actually, you know, not to get off on any tangents or set anyone else off, it, uh, the new Star Wars has actually been, um, you know, a little bit of a disappointment. To be perfectly honest with you, I don't know if you guys feel. How do you how do you feel about the new Star Wars films, Clay? I like this. I'm not going to go off on a tangent, and then he proceeds to start the movie. <laughs> yes, no, that's totally cool. Uh, I like the first one. 
But the second one kind of was some weak sauce. I mean, yeah. I don't know. I, I I didn't enjoy the second one as much as the first. But well, it's like where do you uh, where do you go? You know, where do you go for the third one from there, right? I don't you know, know, but Disney better figure it out because I'm a shareholder and I want my dividend. <laughs> so um, they better just figure that stuff out. That's all I'll say. Um, just right. get your act together. Chess has a food question for you, though. Okay. I do. So what uh, is your favorite food and dessert? Actually, where where are you at location-wise? I don't even know if I heard I, that earlier. I, no, I'm in uh, Sacramento, California. Gotcha. I've actually been wondering when you guys are going to do your hangouts out here. Clay's, Clay's slowly working his way west, so we were happy we got him to Denver. You know, the whole running joke is getting him west of the Mississippi. So he's he's finally put his foot across that. So we're, we're getting yeah, there right. slowly but surely. We'll do, a, we'll do a, a, not a case study, a focus group real quick. So I am rumor, I cannot confirm nor deny, I'm thinking but possibly Phoenix. So is Phoenix close enough for California people to, to make it to? So being you're a California person, is Phoenix like within the world of p- potential? Nah, man, no. <laughs> no, where's Sacramento at? Oh, wait, you're way up north, aren't you? He is. Yeah. He's in a beautiful yeah. part of the northwest. But uh, I mean, before we get too derailed, what's your favorite food yeah. and dessert? So uh, favorite food is I'm actually a breakfast guy. Um, Who isn't? So, yeah, right. So my favorite food is um, Eggs Benedict. It's actually, um, it's my barometer. You know, if I go to a new uh, breakfast place, you order the Eggs Benedict because if they can do a good Eggs Benedict, then it's it's a good restaurant, you know. So, so uh, I'll buy that logic because that's yeah, a difficult so that's, dish. All right, right, exactly. So that's my my barometer, and it's it's definitely one of my uh, favorite foods. And hobby uh, wise, oh, you didn't answer dessert. My bad. A dessert, um, you know, it was a toss up between, uh, you know, vanilla bean uh, ice cream and then cheesecake. So I had to think of, well, what could I eat the most of in one sitting? And that would probably be the ice cream. So vanilla bean ice cream. There you go. That's uh, it's a bit vanilla, <laughs> but it works. <laughs> I told oh. you I was going to bring my C game, and you just got a taste of it. So there Can't we go. Can't wait for the comedy tour, Clay. You're going to yeah, kill it. It's, uh, <laughs> three people got, show up. Yeah, yeah, and two of them will be my parents, and the third will be you. So I mean, there we Required, go. Required, yeah, contractually people. obligated. Yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, and then finally, three words, and what would these words be um, that you would use to describe, a, you know, a successful trader or what it takes to be successful? Um, I would say learn. Practice, repeat. Ooh, so, a repeat. Nice. That's a new one. Yeah, you gotta you gotta continue the education, right? So, learn new things, practice it, you know, test it out, and then repeat that process. I like it. I'm, I'm once again. It's kind of like your eggs Benedict um, logic. I I think that's solid logic with the the three words because as soon as you get too comfortable. Things uh, things can shift on you, and right. one good thing about the markets is, you know, once you learn a chart, a chart is a chart. A candlestick's not going to all of a sudden mean something differently. But in the sense of thinking that something is, you have like the holy grail and something all figured out. You, you always got to be, you know, learning in that sense. You always got to be on your A game and just, you know, keeping in mind all the the dynamics that do occur in the market. So uh, definitely a good answer there. And Adam, that was a. I feel like we should have you back just for like a, a geek out podcast. But, oh yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, this could, I think this could have turned into a five-parter. But uh, thank you for hanging out. <laughs> You're definitely. I don't. I'm not going to even ask. I'm telling you, you will be back at another time uh, because awesome. it's it's great to talk with you right now. So it'll be perfect to get some sort of update later on down the line to see where all this takes you. But um, Ches, I mean, any final words? He, he, I, I would. He's doing things the right way. Would you? Oh, I'm oh absolutely. You would agree. I just, I love when people do it in a logical way and they don't just go, yeah, I wanted to make a bunch of money. So I threw my entire retirement into a stock and I lost it all. I just hate hearing stories <laughs> like that. And gr- granted, you know, people who generally do that, unfortunately, you have what's coming to you. You got to take responsibility. But yeah, doing it in a logical way, treating it like a business. And that's the real recipe for success. Awesome. Yeah, I, I fully awesome. agree. And Adam, um, Ewok Avenger. Thank you for hanging out, and we will definitely uh, talk in the future. Does that sound good? No, that sounds great. I'd love to uh, come back and check in with you guys. And you know, thanks so much for having me and allowing me to share. I really appreciate it. Appreciate your time. The the the, the honor is all on this side of the table. What movie is that from? Oof. 
or is it the pleasure is all on on this side of the table? Have you ever seen Office Space? Oh, oh yeah, man, that was that that was a deep cut for me though. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's. Uh, do you remember that part, Ches, where he, they're interviewing? Is like, no, no, trust me, all the honor is on this side of. I don't even yeah, know I, right. I, I do they, remember that, but I was going to say dumb and dumber because that's just what I default to. Well, that's a high probability anything. trade. Yeah, that's right, a high right. probability trade. <laughs> no, exactly, exactly. Well, Adam, thank you again, and uh, thank we you. will talk yeah. um, definitely in the future. Before you go as a listener, final few things. If you're listening on YouTube, make sure to check out the rest of the channel. There's lots of other videos. There's uh, the quick tip videos. There's vlogs. There's live trades. So check out the channel. Hopefully you decide to ultimately subscribe. If you're listening on iTunes or any of the other podcast players, be sure to subscribe so you are aware when new content comes out. And particularly on iTunes, if you could leave us a rating, that helps out and that goes a really long way. So even if you never spend a dime um, you know, on the business side of things, that's totally fine. But if you enjoy these, you really you know, would help us out by leaving us a rating. And finally, if you are listening on claytrader.com, the show notes page, make sure to click that share button and also leave us a comment down below. We will be interactive, we do read, we will reply. So question, comment, suggestion, criticism, as long as it's constructive criticism, whatever, even if it's a troll, we'll probably still reply. But um, you know, leave us, we, we pride ourselves in being interactive with people that wanna reach out to us. So um, yeah, if you could do any of those, that would be awesome. Thank you again to our co-host Chess. thank you to Adam, and thank you as listeners. We will see you back next week. This has been the Stock Trading Reality Podcast. Thanks for taking the time to hang out. To learn more about Clay and the Clay Trader community, including the trading team, premium training, and more, visit claytrader.com.